Hey everyone, it's Brittany, and welcome to my very first YouTube video. I'm super excited that you're here. Today I'm going to be demonstrating how I drew this 8x10 commission portrait of Max the Labrador Retriever. Now stay tuned through the end of the time-lapse video I'm about to show, and I will be back to explain the methods that I use to create this portrait. Enjoy! everyone, welcome back. Thanks for sticking around. I just have a few quick comments about this portrait. The first thing I want to address is the reference photo used for this. As you can see, it was a photo taken at night and indoors, so not ideal. You know, that can sometimes skew with the coloration, and I had to make do though, because this is a memorial portrait of Max. He is no longer around. He passed away. And so photos are limited and I want to, you know, be able to draw the photo that best represents him for his family. The thing though that was really a bit of a hurdle was the glare across his pupillary corneal region of his eyes. Um, I had to infer a lot of the detail and those reflections that make eyes really pop in portraits. And so I hope I did him justice. It was a little bit of a hurdle, probably the most tricky part of this portrait. Another aspect that I'm not always real happy to see is that I sometimes am unable to get the exact coloration correct with this particular colored animal, that kind of camel tone, beige, tannish color. I just don't have the perfect colors for it in my pastel sets. And so I'm using a lot of combinations of warm grays, peaches, tans, browns, umbers, you know, just all the spectrum of color to create what I hope is a likeness to his coat. But, you know, it's more about the values oftentimes than it is the exact color accuracy. So if your dark values are as dark as they should be and your lights are as light as they should be, you'll have that great contrast that makes that definition and really helps the portrait to pop. A few comments about the kinds of paper that I use. I really prefer pastel matte, and that is a type of paper that is thrown around a lot in the pastel world. It's so beautiful to work on, you guys. I can't express it enough. Sometimes you will battle other papers, and it will throw you off from the pastel game. But I like to make things easy for myself. It's a little spendy, but you got to invest in quality materials if you want to, you know, keep doing this. You gotta make it easy on yourself. So pastel matte, my suggestion. I like the dark gray color, which is what this is. I also work a lot with brown. Those just seem to be my preference. I don't like the light colors, like the light gray or the white. 
they seem to show more of the, the pastel dust. So I veer toward this, but it's a personal preference for sure. There's probably other great papers out there too. I haven't invested a lot of time or money in trying them out. I hope to in the future. If you've got some suggestions for me, throw them my way. I'd love to test them out. Otherwise, I use just purely pastel pencils for portraits like this. I use primarily Faber-Castell Pit Pastels, Carbothello, and Derwent, and Caran d'Ache. Those seem to be. I have a few others from different brands, but I buy a lot of open stock individual pencils if I need a particular color. So I really like to, you know, have a repertoire of, of available colors, but apparently not the right color for this guy's coat. <laughs> A few other tips I have are in reference to the little fine hairs and whiskers on animals like this. What I avoid doing is taking the tip of the pencil and dragging it with equal pressure to the end of that whisker line. What I do is I apply the pressure at the base and I kind of wisp it away, fan it out, and lift it off the paper as I reach that end point. That helps create that nice, wispy, fine end point and not the coarse crayonish line with that blunt end that can kind of make it feel a little cartoonish. So that's a little tip. I also like to go around the perimeter of the animal, adding those little fine hairs, you know, at the, you know, the tips of the ears and over on this neck area. I mean, that really just helps set a portrait apart and bring it from good to great. You may have noticed I do not work with very sharp pencils. I avoid sharpening very frequently, especially with, with animal portraits. I find that, you know, with the fluffiness of the fur, I can often get away with not sharpening very often. And it's partially because I'm a little lazy and it's also because I'm a little cheap. I hate to waste the pastel because I sharpen with a craft knife. And so with this craft knife, you know, it's a little tedious. It's a little arduous. I don't particularly enjoy it is what I'm trying to say. And so with an animal that's sort of fluffy and has this texture of fur, sure, you don't have to sharpen all the time. I rotate the pencils in my hand and then I use the different edges of that tip. And so if I'm drawing an animal though, of course, that needs a little bit more refined detail or, you know, you know, like a saddle on a horse, for instance, you need those very tight details. So I will sharpen very frequently for those portraits. But for this, I get away with it. It's a personal preference. I'll probably change my techniques in the future, but for now, that's just what I do. Regardless of size, pastels take a lot of time and it takes a lot of work to refine your skills so that you're able to get speedy with your process. And so I encourage you to practice, practice every day. Make a point to draw or paint or do whatever creative endeavor you do. Do it every day, even if it's just for 10 minutes. It really makes a world of difference and those habits that you build will carry you through, I promise you. Other than that, I'm pretty pleased with Max's portrait. Um, the person who commissioned this was very pleased with it. So it's time to get him packed up and shipped out this afternoon. If you have any questions or comments about this portrait, about anything related to pastel or becoming an artist, uh, please feel free to leave me a comment. Give me a thumbs up if you want. And I would love, love, love if you subscribed to my channel and watched me as I soar along this artistic journey of mine. I'm trying to make it in the big bad art world. So if you'd like to follow me, I would be much obliged. Thank you everyone. You guys have an excellent day. Bye.